Okay, so I woke up this morning and found out that magically poached the global director of marketing for the HTC Vive, another virtual reality headset. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about the augmented reality company, magically, and explain them a little bit because I don't really think too many people know what they do. So, cool. Hey everyone, it's Andrew Nakis here. We're in Jake Jabs Entrepreneurship Center and I'm here to, you know, talk a little bit about this magical, you know, augmented reality company goes by the name of Magic Leap. Um, and so, I guess going forward, I'm not entirely sure. No one really knows what the company is. This is really just speculation. Um, there's really one MIT technology report that's available that provides a lot of outside um, you know, insight. And besides that, it's really, you know, just enough, it's all just internal uh, outward facing reports is the only thing that can be really pieced together. So, you know, I think to start and to really understand the context of the Magic Leap, you really need to understand the brief modern history of VR and AR. So, surrounded by sandwich boards for a reason. And, you know, it starts with the history of modern VR, a brief history. And so this is essentially like a Google Cardboard or stereoscopic display um, for anything. And it really kind of started modern on the modern side. You know, there was a huge rush of VR in the 90s, but in 2012, uh, when Palmer Lucky from Oculus, uh, you know, took smartphone mobile components, gyroscope, and, you know, high res displays, put them all together, hooked it up to a computer, and launched a Kickstarter. Starting Oculus, the DK1 was released. And this kind of worked with the stereoscopic displays where your lenses, in glass lenses, focus your eye on essentially a smartphone display. And then you kind of view it like a couple inches in front of your face, which tricks your brain into thinking you're in virtual reality. Um, this stuff's really cool. And actually, um, the Durvia's Dive and Google Cardboard kind of brought it to mobile where you can essentially get the stereoscopic display with a phone in it and essentially, you know, see virtual reality and then kind of explore virtual reality the same way you would do it in an Oculus, just, you know, cardboard is now the vessel. Um, this going forward kind of is is, is kind of iterating the next steps are to add like motion tracking, HTC Vive, Oculus, Project Tango, several, you know, units are all doing this in the, the, the new models that are all being released this Christmas. Um, also, uh, another, you know, VR startup called FAV and is doing eye tracking technology and Oculus and HTC Vive, I'm sure, are working on the same thing, and this kind of allows you to select the units, uh, select stuff with your eyes, and kind of focus and define stuff and focus on things with your eyes. And so VR is going to be really cool as it is stereoscopically with eye tracking and motion tracking, um, and it's going to feel amazing and be this cool thing. But the problem, you know, the pros of stereoscopic technology is it's, it's cheap. And it uses like existing mobile technology to kind of understand what VR is. Um, but it's nothing really breakthrough. And the big thing is it tricks your brain into, you know, seeing VR. So you actually get this kind of like mobile sickness effect that really just kind of feels a little uncomforting. So the stereoscopic VR sickness, you know, to some people, it feels uncomfort uncomfortable, you know. It's really, I found personally, it's really hard to use for a prolonged period of time. And, you know, I've tried the Oculus, the cardboard, 
the Dive Project Tango with motion tracking, and then the HTC Vive with motion tracking. And like all of them, some of them are slightly better than others, but they're still like, it never feels like something that I want to sit and play for a solid hour. And to me, that feels like a golden medium for VR. Um, so, you, you know, what people, a lot of experts are calling, uh, it's actually going to be a much bigger industry is AR or augmented reality. And this essentially currently works as a pass-through device with your phones. So the idea is there's a tracker, some high contrast object that you, you know, define. And this allows your phone to track its position relative to the size of this tracker that you defined. And then your phone is able to actually see that tracker and the camera and then augment or put 3D objects over the 2D camera feed. So right now it's very primitive. It's it's uh, you know assets, digital assets over your 2D camera field, um, and this stuff really started in 2010 with smartphones, uh, with the technology called Word Lens. Uh, super cool! It's actually Google uses the technology now. You can point your phone at um, like words in Spanish, and it will translate these words into English and overlay the English words over the Spanish words in augmented reality. You know, it's super useful, super cool stuff. Um, uh, there's also a lot of games and, you know, other just kind of fun experiences in augmented reality. Um, but the problem right currently is you need markers for it to work because currently phones don't understand how they move through the space and where they are without a tracker. Um, this is transforming to motion tracked markerless technology, and this is mainly seen through the Google Project Tango unit, which gives uh, smartphones a depth camera to now understand the space. Um, and this is going to, you know, with motion tracking in smartphones, we'll have markerless augmented reality pass through technology, which will be able to provide even more use to the augmented reality smartphone world. And then, you know, flash forward to this year, this past, you know, year, the HoloLens, Microsoft HoloLens has been released, which is, or announced at least, is essentially um, goggles that display things in augmented reality. Um, and I guess the best way to think about this is, you know, it's a display, it has a computer that has the same motion tracking that the Tango has, that motion tracks how your head moves through the space and then it actually augments things in the physical space in front of you in your field of view so it's essentially like the pass-through smartphone device technology but now through a uh, translucent lens um, but according to Magic Leap Founder and other accounts it's still a stereoscopic display so while not many people outside of the company have not have used it and the developer units are coming out in 2016, you know, I'm a little skeptical of the stereoscopic display due to, you know, my poor experiences with a lot of this VR technology. But, I mean, that's the gist of AR right now and it does have a lot of potential, you know, Going forward, but overall, I think both VR and AR are relatively overhyped with current technology. Um, and because, you know, they have a lot of problems that make them not being able to be, you know, seen in full light. But, you know, there's this new player in town. They raised half a billion dollars in venture funding last year, backed by Google. And this year, there's rumors of a $1 billion round led by Alibaba. And so, really, I mean, these companies, you know, are putting their faith in this product. And I have all the reason to incline that, you know, we should be putting our faith in it as well. Because it seems like the future. Cool. And so... You know, this Magic Leap technology, there's not many people know anything about it. Um, there hasn't been any videos outside of two released by the company of like screen caps of what's being shown. Um, but, you know, you can 
from reading the reports, this one outside report and all the accounts, it seems like really breakthrough technology. Um, and I'll make sure to link the uh, reports and several other notable links below. Um, so, you know, no one really knows exactly what it's going to be looking like. Kind of the gist is it's going to be a hollow lens, but with this new light field technology. Um, and what they're trying to get the size of a light field and what it actually light field technology is, is instead of using the stereoscopic display that, you know, AR and VR demos that, you know, are currently on your head use is the two images in one screen that tricks your eyes into think, thinking it's looking at you know something that's far away this actually just projects light straight into your eyes so it feels like it's actually in reality and it doesn't have you know this trickery that you know VR currently has and kind of the gist that everyone's saying is it it works exactly how you normally see things so Due to motion tracking technology, it can essentially measure how far everything is apart from each other. And the light field technology apparently can then project objects so they actually, you perceive them as being, you know, this far away, or the, the correct distance away. So if it was up in this corner, the light field projector would measure and say, okay, this is about two and a half feet. Okay, let's see what a light, this is now it's projected at two and a half feet away and it apparently is a very real experience. And the interesting thing about, and the HoloLens is, seems to be like this too, this stuff can do AR stuff, you know, and do the pass-through lens stuff, but it can also do VR stuff. Um, part of the reason why, you know, this 360 video feels like a great way to explain it because ideally in the future, people would be able to view it in a hollow lens or, you know, this magic leap. And so I think the big idea is that the magic leap has, if everything that people are saying turned out to be true, it has a lot of potential to be this disruptive force, kind of disrupting all of this stuff, disrupting all of this stuff and really being the main vessel going forward that people think about VR and AR. And we'll see, you know, you never know, you can't believe everything you hear, but it seems like this stuff will be the future and hopefully how, you know, provide the best experience and bring, you know, the hype that a lot of these technologies and the promise that these technologies bring, bring the hype into actualization. So, you know, I'm looking really forward to what VR could be and AR, um, but you know, I still haven't seen it yet. I'm excited, I'm you know, continuing to develop these technologies, but you know, this is what I'm, I'm personally very excited about. So hopefully you know, this was a good kind of gist of Magic Leap and AR and VR, and you know, going forward, um, you know, we just you gotta sit and wait. Hopefully they release some information soon. So cool.